Hello and welcome to this AWS Media and Entertainment video tutorial. In this episode, I'm going to talk about the encoding configuration that you should start with when building a new live streaming or video on demand workflow with AWS Elemental products or services. I'm Ivan Geraghty and I'm a Solutions Architect Manager at AWS, specializing in our suite of media services. To give you a little background, the introduction of the AWS Media Services in 2017 brought with it a democratization of video processing. Previously, broadcast quality video encoding was very expensive and out of reach of most businesses, other than traditional broadcasters or content providers. The AWS Media Services, with their pay-as-you-go pricing, made broadcast grade video processing accessible to all businesses and use cases, ranging from educational streaming and video on work demand workflows, public safety videos, corporate streaming, fitness classes, product training, and e-commerce, and the list goes on. The AWS Elemental appliances and media services are built from the ground up for video professionals, engineers who are familiar with working with different video codecs, COP structures and encoding profiles. However, now that any business can access these services, non-video professionals could struggle to understand all the different options that these services provide, potentially making it a daunting experience to build a new video encoding workflow. This brings me to the purpose of this video tutorial. I'm going to walk through our recommended video configuration for H.264 encodes. The settings I'm going to highlight will give you the best video performance and quality for approximately 90% of workflows. There will always be corner cases that will need specific configurations, but starting with these recommendations will provide the best foundation for your video encoding needs and will be suitable for the majority of workflows. Because this subject matter is so deep, we could talk about the different parameters and features for hours so I'm not going to focus on any specific settings or features. I'm just going to call out the configuration you should apply. However, there will be some QR codes at the end of this video that will take you to our product documentation and allow you to investigate further if you want to. The video configuration that I'm going to share is transferable between the different AWS Elemental encoding products and services. These are AWS Elemental Live, and AWS Elemental Server are on-premises, live and file video processing products. And AWS Elemental Media Live and AWS Elemental Media Convert are fully managed live and file video processing services. Let's build this encoding configuration in the console. I'm going to take you through the process of setting up our recommended video encoding configuration in AWS Elemental Media Live. I will also show you the same configuration applied to our on-premise encoder, Elemental Live, and Media Convert, our Cloud Transcoder. The UI looks slightly different, but the parameters are the same. Open the Media Live console and click on the Create Channel button. At this point, I'm going to add an input to the channel. Click the Add button next to the Input Attachment section, click the drop-down menu, and select the available input. Once selected, click Confirm. This will take you back to the main Create Channel page. Now let's configure input filtering. With your input selected in the General Input section, leave the input filtering set to default. Change the filter strength to 3 and enable both the D-block and D-noise filters. Next, click the Add button in the Output Group section and select the type of output you want to use. For this example, I'm going to build a UDP output stream. Check on the output link under the UDP output group to open the stream setting page where the video encoding parameters are accessed. Add the width and the height of the encoded picture you want to generate. In this example, I'm going to generate a full HD stream, 1920 by 1080. In the codec setting drop down menu, select H.264. This will enable further encoding options. For the aspect ratio settings, I will leave the default initialized from source, which passes through the aspect ratio config in the source video to the output encoded video. For the rate control mode, 
Use the drop down menu to select QVBR, our quality defined variable bitrate control. This is one of the topics that I highly recommend further reading on because the QVBR encoding process maintains high video quality but intelligently saves bits where it can, which reduces the cost of delivering and storing the encoded video. Open the additional settings drop down menu and enter the maximum video bitrate you want to use. I am using 5 megabits a second. Leave the buffer size, the buffer fill percentage and the QVBR quality level all blank as this forces the encoder to use its default settings and it will force QVBR into auto mode. This allows the QVBR level to be set on a frame by frame basis rather than a set level per encode. Open the frame rate menu. The frame rate control is set to initialize from source. Leave the default settings unless you need to change the video frame rate. Also leave the rest of these parameters at their default settings. Take a note if you are building a media package output group, you will need to specify both the aspect ratio and the frame rate parameters. I recommend you configure them to match your source content if possible. Open the GOP structure menu and change the GOP size from 90 to 2, then change the GOP size units from frames to seconds. Next, change the num B frames to 3, leaving the closed GOP cadence set to 1, and change the num ref frames to 5. Configure the B frame reference to enabled, leave the scene change detect set to enabled, and change the sub GOP length from fixed to dynamic to finish this section. Open the codec detail section. Change the profile from main to high, leaving the level set to auto. Having the level set to auto allows the encoder to set the encoding level based on the profile, resolution, bitrate and frame rate of each encode. In the additional settings, leave the entropy encoding set to CABAC and the slice is left blank. Leave the adaptive quantization set to auto and all other parameters as their defaults, apart from the look ahead rate control. Ensure that is set to high. You can skip over the time code, color space parameters, and open the additional encoding settings menu. In the quality level drop down menu, you can select between enhanced quality or standard quality. For most use cases, standard quality is our recommended choice. However, you can select enhanced quality for an additional video quality gain, but do bear in mind that there is an additional cost when using the enhanced quality option. This is offset by slightly smaller encoded files, which will cost less to store and deliver via CDN. However, it is something for you to be aware of. I will leave this parameter blank and it will default to the standard quality setting. We can also ignore the filter settings in this section. The last part of this configuration to consider is the scaling settings. Open the menu and leave the scaling behavior set to default. For the sharpness parameter, there are a few things to consider. If the video source you are encoding has lower resolution than the output you are creating, i.e. your source is SD and you are creating a HD output, then leave the scaling setting to 50. If the source video has a higher resolution than the output video you are creating, i.e. the source video is 4K UHD and you are creating a HD output, change the sharpness setting value to 100. Also configure the scaling to 100 if your source resolution and output resolution are the same, i.e. full HD to full HD output. That completes the media encoding configuration. Let's jump over to the Elemental Live appliance to show you how the exact same encoding configuration looks in that product. Let's start with the input filtering section. As you can see, we are applying the same values that were employed with Media Live. Now let's look at the output encoding configuration. You will see as we scroll past each parameter, they have been set to match the encoding configuration that was applied to the Media Live encode. Finally, we will look how this configuration can be applied to AWS Elemental Media Convert, our file-based video transcoding service. One of the big differences here is that because Media Convert is a file-based transcoder, you have 
access to an additional parameter called quality tuning level. Because you are not processing a live stream, Media Convert lets you select either single pass, single pass HQ, or multi pass HQ transcodes. For the H.264 transcodes, we recommend that you select the single pass HQ option as it costs the same as a single pass transcode but delivers slightly higher video quality, with the caveat that the single pass HQ transcode is a little slower to process than the single pass transcode. As you can see, my Media Convert transcode is configured with the same parameters that both Media Live and Elemental Live employed. Here is a quick recap of our recommended H.264 video configuration to apply with your AWS Elemental encoding workflows. Note that any parameters not highlighted here should be left with their default value in the UI. Thank you for your time, and I hope you found this video tutorial useful. Please check out our other AWS Media and Entertainment video tutorials. If you are interested in learning more about QVBR and improving video quality with your AWS Elemental encodes, please scan these QR codes to access our documentation. Thanks again, and see you at the next video tutorial.